The Asthmatic Diver How does asthma affect diving possibilities? By the Dan Medical Team, performed by Dr. Franz Cronier. Asthma is a chronic disorder of the lungs in which there is a tendency for the muscles surrounding the bronchi or breathing tubes to contract excessively. This causes a narrowing or bronchoconstriction with resulting increase in breathing resistance, particularly during exhalation, and may manifest as wheezing, chest tightness, coughing or breathlessness. We're going to discuss how asthma affects diving and whether or not an individual with asthma is fit to dive. Many factors may trigger an episode of asthma or bronchial constriction, including exposure to allergens, noxious fumes, cold air, exercise or respiratory infections such as colds or flu. The increase in breathing resistance due to narrowing of the airways may be aggravated by the collection of mucus within the airways. As far as diving is concerned though, there are basically three issues that make scuba diving risky for asthmatics. Firstly, there's increased breathing resistance with a buildup of carbon dioxide. Secondly, there is potentially an increased risk for overexpansion injuries of the lung. And thirdly, the medication may also affect diving. Increased breathing resistance. As soon as the human body is immersed in water, there's an increased resistance to breathing due to the mechanical and anti-gravity effects of being in water. In addition, there may be greater oxygen consumption and carbon dioxide production because of exercise, and this requires a greater exchange of air and more breathing effort. There's also the effect of depth on gas density. With greater density of gas comes a further increase in breathing resistance. In an individual with breathing difficulties due to asthma, these additional demands on the body may be sufficient to lead to a critical buildup of carbon dioxide with panic or even loss of consciousness. Lung overexpansion injuries. Narrowing of the airways and mucus production impairs the ability to exhale easily. As a result, air trapping may occur during ascent, particularly in an emergency ascent due to panic or breathlessness. This predisposes the diver to pulmonary barotrauma leading to pneumothorax, pneumomediastinum, with or without cerebral arterial gas embolism. Effects of medication on diving. The so-called reliever pumps can cause a tremor or anxiety and this may again predispose to loss of dexterity and diving accidents. A further theoretical concern is that some medications also lead to dilation of blood vessels in the lung which may cause a loss of effectiveness in filtering out small bubbles commonly formed during decompression. This increases the risk of paradoxical embolism, that is gas embolism not caused by pulmonary barotrauma. The risk is obviously difficult to quantify or prove. Determining fitness to dive in divers with asthma. To avoid risks related to impaired breathing and pulmonary overexpansion injuries, Divers with asthma must have unimpaired lung functions that remain stable during normal exposures related to diving. Divers who experience persistent or regular asthma attacks in response to exercise, cold or stress are discouraged to dive. Diving should obviously be avoided during and up to 48 hours after an asthma attack or any upper respiratory tract infection causing pulmonary symptoms such as coughing or wheezing. Previously, the only asthmatics that were considered fit for recreational diving were those whose symptoms were completely controlled on inhaled cortisone. The use of a short-acting bronchodilator or rescue or reliever medication such as Ventolin or Ventese was not considered appropriate as its effects were unpredictable and short-lived. But with more modern, long-acting bronchodilators such as Cerevent or combinations of bronchodilators and cortisone combinations such as serotide, which is also called a controller medication, some divers are now permitted to dive if their symptoms are controlled completely and their lung functions remain stable and unimpaired. However, the asthma should be stable for at least three months after starting the medication. The following would indicate the need for reassessment of medical fitness to dive. Firstly, any deterioration in lung function wheezing or regular early morning coughing. Secondly, any intercurrent asthma attack or need for rescue or reliever medication on top of the long-acting medication. And thirdly, any significant chest infection that is symptoms lasting more than a week. Asthma is known for its tendency to wax and wane. Symptoms appear with a chest cold and remain for several weeks thereafter. Autumn and spring may bring exposure to allergens that provoke attacks. 
As a result, fitness to dive cannot be assumed and it must be assessed consciously by the diver prior to every dive. Diving is not recommended unless the diver is completely free of respiratory symptoms before each dive. Indeed, most diving medical experts agree that asthmatics should not dive within 48 hours of using a rescue or reliever medicine and experience complete relief of their symptoms. Even an asthmatic has an attack, spirometry, which is a common pulmonary function test measure, should be done to assess the severity and need for treatment. The individual should not dive until the airway function returns to normal. Mild to moderate asthmatics with normal screening spirometry can be considered candidates for diving if their exhaled volume of air in one second, also called the FEV1, is at least 75% of the full volume of exhaled gas, or FVC. In other words, FEV1 divided by FVC should render a percentage of 75%. The risk of diving is probably acceptable if the diving candidate with a history of asthma shows no deterioration in lung function after strenuous exercise. However, divers must be made aware that they are facing an increased risk of an adverse event related to diving and no diver with asthma should be diving without restrictions. The minimum restrictions needed for diving are, firstly, the diver should follow a personal testing protocol and secondly, diving should be adapted to account for possible problems. Personal testing protocol. The first step is to ensure that the asthma is well controlled. This is of course done in collaboration with a treating physician. The control required for diving means that the diver should never or very rarely wheeze if on controlling medication and rarely have to use the reliever medication. The severity of attacks is also an important factor and persons who have needed hospitalization for their asthma within the past five years should not dive. If the asthma is well controlled though, the diver should be seen by a doctor specifically trained in diving medicine. The objective is to assess the lung function values and to determine whether enough reserve capacity exists. Many divers may then need to see a specialist pulmonologist for further evaluation. After being cleared by a diving doctor, the diver should buy him or herself a peak flow meter, which is available from most large pharmacies. Follow the instructions carefully to ensure that the measurements are performed correctly. Divers need to perform a number of measurements per day for a period of at least two weeks. These measurements can be used to determine the normal peak flow values for the person. And the person then can perform a peak flow on the day before diving and on the day of the dive. If the peak flow is decreased by more than 10% of the normal maximum value, the person should not dive until 48 hours after returning to normal. Adapted diving practices. Because depth increases both the gas density and the risks of breathing resistance causing problems, asthmatic divers should refrain from doing deep dives that is deeper than 30 meters. Deeper dives also typically require decompression stops which a diver with asthma may not be able to complete if problems were to arrive. Diving in areas where medical facilities are not available would also be a risk to consider. Thank you for listening to this program. Of course, as always, if you have additional questions, contact the Dan Hotline. Thank you for supporting Dan.